Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. So the other day I was doing some online shopping for my new 90p and while I was browsing through this website I came across this product right here, the Zis CO2 generator. Never heard of this before, never seen it before but I thought it looked pretty interesting and I thought you know what let's just order one so then we can unbox it on the channel, we can have a look together, see if it's any good because it was actually pretty cheap. I mean normally people kind of are a little bit hesitant when it comes to buying a CO2 system because well, let's face it, CO2 systems are pricey, but this set was relatively cheap. To buy this CO2 generator was 38 euros, and then you have to buy like a, like a refill kit to it. So here we have two ingredients, and this was 10 euros. So all in all, this kit is almost 50 euros, which is of course still quite some money, but if you compare it to a full-on CO2 system, then I would say it's affordable. So yeah, um, interesting. Let's just uh, open it up, see if it's any good. Okay, so just to be clear, this is not a sponsored video. I'm not affiliated with this Aqua. And I just bought this product with my own money just because I was curious about it. So yeah, let's just start with the box first. We have the controllable chemical CO2 generator. And they call this one the ZC2. So maybe this is the version 2. Maybe there was a previous version to this. It says here up to 200 liters or 50 US gallons. So I don't know, that uh, seems quite promising. On this side, we see this CO2 generator, the world's first controllable CO2 generator. Not sure if that's true, but um, they say it. <laughs> I guess it is. A speed control, instant start, safe, easy use, pure CO2, low temp, okay. That sounds very promising. So on this side of the box, we basically have a little overview of how this works. So here on number one, we have the solution tank. So that's, I guess, what's in this bottle right here. Below that we have the powder tank, so that's for the other ingredient. And then in the middle here we have like a little control valve so we can adjust the amount of CO2. CO2 comes out through here. Now that's it, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm assuming that the two ingredients are citric acid and baking soda. It doesn't say that on the, uh, on the kit itself, but we will unbox this as well and take a closer look at it. Let's open this box up and see what we have inside. Hmm. It's actually a pretty good size. A little manual, I guess. I'll read that in a little bit. Let's first take a close look at this. Uh, so there's some parts are inside. Okay, so let's take a look at the container first. So this is made from plastic. But it's actually pretty thick plastic and it feels feels pretty solid. Like of course this is going to be a CO2 system so there will probably be some pressure in here. And this stuff feels like it can actually hold some pressure as well. It's, yeah, it's not really big. So, I mean it's not really small either but this is something that you can definitely kind of hide behind your tank as well, you know. And on top of the lid we have three nozzles. I think this one was the safety pressure relief. The middle one was for the uh, CO2 adjustment, so we can control the amount of CO2. And this one was basically an adapter for the CO2 tubing and the CO2 diffuser. And then I think in here we put the, the powder, in here you put the liquid solution. And then I guess the liquid kind of drops from the center here into the powder. And I'm guessing that's going to form a chemical reaction, which will then give us CO2. But then how does the CO2 go up in? Oh wait, I see. So there's basically two holes in this cap here. I guess one is then for the liquid solution and the other one is for the CO2 tr to travel back up in here. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's move on. Tiny piece of airline tubing. Yeah, it's like one meter. And then in here we have a little pouch with some more accessories. This was everything that was in that little pouch. So we have a CO2 diffuser. This thing looks very interesting as well. Never seen a CO2 diffuser like this. I'm guessing the CO2 comes out from the side and not so much from the top. So that's interesting. This comes off. Yeah, I guess those two white things here are some sort of membrane. So I'm curious to see how fine the CO2 bubbles are going to be with this diffuser. And um, here we have the, uh, the cap for the CO2 tubing, a little suction cup. And then this thing is, I guess, the CO2 control valve adjuster thingy that goes 
in the center here. And there's actually some markings on the on that thing as well. So it will tell you which way to turn if you want to add or reduce the amount of CO2. Okay, so that was all the components from this box. So now let's have a look at this generation kit. Okay, so we have two ingredients. One is liquid and one is dry powder. So the liquid solution goes in here. And it says on the bottle that it's a mild acidic solution, handled with care. So I'm pretty sure that this is just the liquid form of uh, citric acid. I think most of us will know the citric acid and baking soda CO2 generation kits. I think this is in a way very similar, but it just works a little bit differently. So yeah, in here we have the dry powder. It says it contains carbonate salt. I'm pretty sure that this is baking soda. It kind of has that same consistency, you know? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly read the uh, instruction manual and then we can uh, set it up, I guess. So these two ingredients are indeed citric acid and baking soda. They actually mention that in the manual as well. They basically say like, okay, you can use our kit, but you can also do it yourself. And if you want to do it yourself, add 160 grams of citric acid to a bottle, then add 350 milliliters of water. And then for the other ingredient, they say you use 200 grams of baking soda. That's pretty cool. Now I've already started assembling it. I've basically added this um, control valve here. This is basically like a, a needle valve in the normal CO2 system. So I've added this and then it basically closes this hole over here. And then if you start twisting this, if you start opening it, then it will create a tiny gap here. And then the liquid solution will start dropping out from here into the powder. Okay, so the first step is to add the powder in this container. So let's do that right now. Powder is in, and then they say that you need to add 200 milliliters of water. It doesn't say that we need to mix it. They basically say as a caution to check that there's no powder on this uh, red rubber ring, because you want to make sure that we have a good seal, you know? Otherwise the CO2 is going to start leaking, but yeah, it looks okay. So I think we can now add the lid. Okay, so the lid is on, so we can now add this liquid solution in this uh, top compartment. Before we do that, we want to make sure that it's absolutely closed. Otherwise, it's immediately going to start producing CO2. So it's closed. So we can now open this up and pour it through there. I just want to make sure that... I just want to check if we can safely pour that or maybe we need like a little funnel. Yeah, that's a little tricky. Let me check if I have a small funnel. Actually, if I use this, maybe it's a little bit easier. I'm just going to use this jug. Okay, next step is to add this cap for our CO2 diffuser in the airline tubing. I think we want to make sure that's proper tight as well. I think that's okay. So we can then add our tubing. And then we just need to prepare the CO2 diffuser. So we can add this suction cup. And then they advise you to fill up the CO2 diffuser with water. So it basically acts as a bubble counter as well. So let's do that right now. We can open it up. Let's see what happens if we submerge it in some water. Ah, it's already filled up. And then in the manual, they basically suggest you to close this lid as tightly as possible so you can get really fine CO2 bubbles. Okay, so we can now hook up the diffuser and then we should be able to start the CO2 reaction and see if anything, see if it works. So we add the diffuser on this end. And then I think that's the entire kit set up. Is this CO2 generator completed? So let's hook it up to one of my tanks, open the valve and see if anything happens. Yeah, let's actually just set it up on the vase. I mean, why not? Use the vase as a test subject. Actually scratch that. Uh, round vase and suction cups do not go very well together. So we're gonna use it on the crystal red no filter aquascape okay so everything is now set up so we can now start mixing the two solutions solutions together so we can open the valve and let the liquid solution drip into the baking soda solution now the manual says to do this very slowly and we should basically aim for one drop per five to eight minutes so that's super slowly so i have no idea how much i have to turn this valve but i'm just going to give it a go 
yeah so it's a bit hard to see on camera but basically from there we should start seeing the solution drop but we want one drop every five to eight minutes so i'm just going to slowly open up the valve and then wait until i see a drop you can see a little drop hanging from there so i'm now at about one drop per minute more or less and as it drops you can see that the reaction is happening you can see some tiny bubbles forming in the uh, in the bottom solution so that's pretty interesting yeah one drop per minute right now which is of course still too fast but i'm assuming it's going to take a few drops before we start seeing any action at the diffuser so i'm just going to keep it like this for now and just uh, we'll go and take a little coffee break and then we'll come back oh it actually already started producing co2 and it's literally only been a few minutes so i guess one drop of that solution is like equal to quite a lot of co2 Currently we have a variety of small bubbles and big bubbles. Let's see if that's gonna improve in a little bit. Okay, so it's been about an hour. This is the current situation. CO2 is running in the uh, tank on the top shelf and I just have the uh, CO2 system on the shelf below that. I'm actually quite impressed with the CO2 diffuser. We still have a few large bubbles, but the majority of the bubbles are, are quite small actually. So that's pretty good. Um, I've actually reduced the amount of drops per second to one drop per 11 minutes. So with a normal CO2 system, increasing and decreasing the amount of CO2 is quite easy. You can just open or close the needle valve and that will change the amount of bubbles per second coming out of the bubble counter. With this system, it's a little bit more tricky because we have to measure uh, drops per certain amount of minutes. So according to the manual, it was one drop per five to eight minutes but I don't know for what kind of aquarium that is, how, which size aquarium. So we basically have to open the valve and then look for that drop and then keep a stopwatch next to it. So I just open the valve a little bit. I sat next to it for 11 minutes with the stopwatch. And then after 11 minutes, that one drop dropped. And that was enough for, I think this size aquarium, but yeah, it's a little bit um, interesting way of measuring it. <laughs> it just definitely requires a little bit of patience as well. So that's the test run basically completed. Now I don't really want to run CO2 on this tank. I mean, in here I have a couple of uh, crystal red shrimp. They're quite sensitive. So I'd rather not use CO2 on this tank. So I'm going to remove it from here and actually add it to my beta aquascape. In here I already have a CO2 system up and running. So we can swap it out, add this new system, and then I can just test it for a few days, you know. So it's now been a week since I've set up the CO2 system and it's actually been doing really well. I had to adjust the control valve on top a few times to get the right amount of CO2 for this tank. But once I found the right setting, it's been running without any issues. Of course, this system does not have a uh, solenoid valve. So there's no way for us to put this on a timer and have it shut off uh, automatically. I guess you could manually close the valve at night and open it again the next morning, but I know myself and I'm going to forget that. So. I've just been keeping it, keeping it running 24-7. Now for people that are wondering if it's safe to run CO2 24-7, it is safe as long as you make sure you don't inject an, uh, too much CO2 and you also make sure that you have good surface agitation. So for example, on this tank, the filter outflow is quite close to the surface. It's giving a nice surface ripple and that's bringing in enough oxygen for the fish. So yeah, I've been running it 24-7 and um, it's been doing very well. The CO2 diffuser is still working very good as well. Really small CO2 bubbles. There's just like one big bubble escaping every few seconds, but yeah, it's pretty good. And I don't know if you can see it on camera, but the liquid solution is still up to here. So I don't think we've used much in the past week. And I'm wondering if the CO2 production will stop once we finish the liquid solution or if it will stop earlier. But I guess we will find out in like a month or maybe two months from now. Okay, so let's wrap up this video by going over the pros and the cons. Let's start with the pros first. I think for me the biggest pro is the price. I mean, 38 euros for this set, of course, without uh, the ingredients, but 38 euros for this set, I think is really good. I haven't really seen anything else in this price range that is this good. Actually, I haven't really seen anything in this price range at all. So yeah, 38 euros for a CO2 system, I think is really good. Uh, second pro is the size. I mean, it's a pretty small CO2 system as well. It's just something that you can easily hide behind the tank or in the cabinet. I've placed it next to the tank and I've just put a plant in front of it. Yeah, just easily, easy to hide, you know. A uh, third pro is the easy setup. 
I mean, for me, it was really easy to set it up. I just had to add the ingredients, close it up, and we were ready to go. Also, I imagine that once this is finished, you can, you can just pour it all out, give it a rinse with some warm, warm tap water, add new ingredients, and you're immediately ready to go, you know? So, really like that. That brings me to the fourth pro, uh, easy refills. So if you consider, if you think about like normal traditional CO2 systems with a pressurized cylinder, getting a refill is just a little bit tricky. You know, you always have to leave the house and go to a shop to get a refill. And with this stuff, you can just order uh, citric acid and baking soda, have it delivered to your home, and you know, it just makes refills a lot easier. And then the fifth pro, the last one, I think is overall build quality. I mean, yes, it's made from plastic, but it's not cheap plastic, it's not thin plastic, it's, it just feels really well made. It feels like it can hold pressure and everything just fits together really well, like twisting on the lid, twisting on those uh, valves and stuff. Yeah, build quality is definitely a pro as well. Uh, moving on to the cons, of course there's some negative things as well. So the biggest con for me is the fact that there is no option to switch it off automatically, so there's no solenoid valve. I do wonder if it's possible to add them on yourself, like if you would add a valve between the tubing I wonder what would happen if you close it, like would, of course the pressure in this chamber would rise and I wonder if the pressure would rise enough to stop the liquid citric acid from dropping down, so basically stopping the chemical reaction. I wonder if that's possible, so maybe that's something that we will have to try out at some point. Yeah, not, switch, not being able to switch it off automatically, that's a bit of a con. Uh, the second con is the relatively small amount of CO2. So with that refill kit that I showed you in the beginning of the video, that will only produce roughly 100 grams of CO2. Now 100 grams on this tank should last me at least, I think at least two months, something like that. But I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, 100 grams of CO2 on, like on the box, they mentioned that this set is for tanks up to 200 liters. So if you have 100 grams of CO2 for a 200 liter tank, I think you're gonna be refilling this thing every, every week or so. So just a relatively small amount of CO2. And the third con is that the refills are pretty expensive. So with a tradi traditional CO2 system, like a two kilogram pressurized bottle, I can get that refilled for 20 euros. So that's 20 euros for two, kil two kilogram. So that's 20 euros for two kilograms of CO2. So that means that 100 grams is one euro. So that refill kit was 10 euros, so like 10 times more expensive. Um, of course, that, re that refill kit is more expensive, but and if you will go the DIY route and just buy citric acid and baking soda in bulk, it will be cheaper, but it will still be more expensive than going the traditional route with pressurized CO2. So yeah, refills slightly more expensive, that's the third con, and honestly, besides that, I can't really think of anything else, so yeah, I'm quite impressed with this CO2 system. I think that's it, I think that's the end of the video. So guys, let me know in the comments what do you guys think of this system. Yeah, curious to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.